Well, hey, I'd like to welcome to the show Rola Ferrari from FIS, FinTech Sales Pro. So we're going to get a little deep dive into the world of FinTech. Rola, let's start with the basics. What is FinTech and why does it matter? How is it even showing up in our lives? <laughs> why is it showing up in our lives? That's a great question. Um, well, I'll start by saying FinTech stands for financial technology. And if you just really look at financial technology, it's it's the purpose of it is the use of technology to improve and provide financial services. So if you think about it, it's about apps, softwares, it's using the technology of apps, softwares, digital tools to do anything from banking to borrowing money to investing. Um, and, and why it matters, I would say, is it makes it easy for all of us. Um, it's convenient, uh, you know, secure. Um, but if personally, why it impacts me the most is it gives me back time. And if you ask me, um, time is the most valuable commodity we have. So instead of me having to go to a bank to open up a bank account, I can do it right there on the app. And that's that's what fintech really is, that technology behind that that gives you the opportunity to to open up that bank account right on that app. Okay, so <laughs> what makes FinTech Solutions valuable to end users then? Well, so I said a little bit about that, right? It, it provides um, convenience, ease of, you know, it's easy. It's in a push of a button. If, Mike, I want to pay you right at the end of this podcast. I want to send you a payment. I don't have to write you a check. You wait in the mail. I'm, I'm going to send it right to you through Venmo. Um, through, you know, whether it's, it's peer to peer payments, whether it's your business, um, or your bank or financial, in, you know, institution providing that, that technology for you. You know, I think back on that, it's, uh, nowadays that Venmo or PayPal or some other tools like that, you know, it, like, as opposed to, I'm going to go and I'm going to go to like a drugstore or wherever I see a Western union sign, and if I needed to instantly send money, that's how I would have done it. And and it's not even like 10 years ago, it seems like that was still kind of a common way. And yeah. now it's changed so much. So I think that time piece is is incredible. So over the last in the last decade, decade and a half, I I think of PayPal as being one of the first big yeah. fintech companies. Uh and and all those guys making their money 20 some years ago. Um, what do you see as the, is the future? Is it, is it growing and expanding or, or is it running into some challenges because obviously banking is a fairly regulated industry? Yeah, I would say, um, it's a mix of both, right? Um, I think from the way it's evolving, I think I, I see the rise of instant payments. You know, you're talking about real-time payments, um, peer-to-peer payments. Um, that industry is is once in a lifetime really opportunity right now for growth, I would say, um, from an instant payments and a payments uh, business standpoint. Now, um, when it comes to regulation, that's where I see the opportunity. And I always say the banking industry and the fintech industry are... Um, what do I call them? Frenemies or it's a love hate relationship. Um, they both need each other, right? Banks need the innovation and the customer interface, and they need to provide that instant secure um, gratification, payment, ease, use, whatever you want to call it. But we're on the generation is evolving to instant everything. You want to buy a car, you buy it on an app instantly. You know, Tesla, for example. I mean, it just, there's, there's so, it's everything. It's just, but the, the, some of the problems that fintechs do face is, and I would say the banking industry faces, right, is, is the regulation around that. Um, fintechs, I, I call it, they, they rent a bank sometimes. You know, if they're selling some, some banking products and running, um, their platform as a bank, they're, they're using and partnering with a bank and renting their license so they can have some type of regulatory, um, so they can use the regulatory licenses. That's exactly why they're, they're partnering with them. Um, however, 
it gets a little bit complicated um, in the way fintechs need to do a better job of putting parameters around regulation um, that banks have the infrastructure and fintechs don't. Yeah, I know that there was an issue uh, with a fairly large fintech company called Synapse because one of the things, uh, all banks are FDIC regulated, right? The federal deposit something. I can't Insurance what... Corporation. Thank yep. you. Right. So it started uh, almost 100 years ago. If you deposit money, you know, thanks to FDR, that money is guaranteed to not be messed with. It's federally backed. But some of these fintech corps, in fact, like all of them, don't have that federal backing. Is that one of the things that happened with the Synapse opportunity? Is that am I reading that right or remembering that well? Yeah. You are remember that remembering that right, and it is something that happened earlier in in 2024. I don't know all the exact details about it, but what I can tell you is, they filed for bankruptcy, and the fintech partnered with a. I think it was Evolve Trust and Company. I don't quote me on that, but it, it was a, a bank. I think the name was Evolve Trust something, and so from a reputational risk, right? The the bank had partnered with them. What what they did is they established a, a bank account that commingled all of their end users into that one bank account. So a lot of those customers that banked with the fintech company thought they were under the impression that they were FDIC insured because they were partnering with a bank, but they are not because the bank only protects that fintech bank account, which was one account that had all the commingled custo- their customers in that account. So yeah. if their accounts, all of their accounts were not in that bank. So we don't really know if, you know, some fintechs, I don't know that that's exactly what happened, but in a, in a nutshell, that is why right now it's much more difficult for banks and, you know, to partner with fintechs. It's, um, it, there's a lot more scrutiny and there's a lot more uh, regulation around that, um, that that they're going to be looking at. So this does not happen again. Um, again, fintechs are are innovative and creative, right? And they're they're giving us all these tools. But the banking has the infrastructure and the risk and the insurance that they both need to work together um, collectively to ensure that the fintech companies um, sustain, if you will, as well as the, the, and the banking industry also meet customer demand. I like how you call them frenemies, right? Because they're, <laughs> you know, the, the fintech is certainly codependent on the bank. I don't know whether or not the bank is as codependent on the fintech, but you talked about the speed and the ease of use and the customer experience that these fintech entities offer. You know, I think about in the old days, forget old days, I just had a client write me a check uh, a month ago. And in in the moment, I made the decision, am I going to take this to my bank and deposit it? and wait until it clears? Or am I gonna take it to his bank and cash it and then go deposit cash into my bank? And I opted for the latter because it just seemed like I was driving by his bank first and foremost. And I was like, well, this will just be easier and it'll speed up the whole transaction. We don't have that but, issue, right? In the in the FinTech world. No, and, and that's the beauty, right, of it is you have all these options. You can do the, the way you just explained, right, which is going to eat up a lot of your time. Um, and, and let alone just the efficiency. You don't know what happens to you on the way to the bank, on the way back from the bank. Or you could, you have the mobile app that you can just take a picture of the check front and back. Okay. Or I could, if you have Venmo, we could Venmo each other. Or PayPal. There are so many different apps out there that, so you have all these options, right? Um that's that's the that's where fintech has really um I, I don't think where fintech is now, especially when it comes to instant payments, it's it's no longer, you know, you have to adapt. It's it's here, it's used, um, and 
it's it's going to become the new norm if it's not so already today. Um, you know, guess, you, uh, yeah. Let me interject. My background is technology, and I wrote a book on cybersecurity. So that mm -hmm. always has been my cons biggest concern uh, with doing it over online, as it were, because there's a lot of bad guys online. So how do, how do they take care of the security element? Yeah. So I, I think, right, they take care of the security element through partnering with banks and having cybersecurity measures in place. So you, no matter what, these disruptors, I always say, need a reliable partner, whether it's, you know, partner like FIS or a partner like JP Morgan, you always need a partner in order to make sure your security is up to par and you have the regulations in place. Because then what will happen is you'll either... Um, you go out of business, to be quite frank. And fintech, the fintechs that don't comply and don't get on board and don't get on board with you know security regulation, they will not last. They will not last, and they will disappear. Um, that's my, in my humble opinion, uh, that, that from what, what I'm seeing. I mean, that that's just not something. So, from a cybersecurity, right? You run into that risk anywhere, from even the traditional fashion. If we go into a bank. Your, all your information, we're not really carrying any of that cash. Everything is just a number on a computer screen if you want to, you know, dummy it down. Um, but, but that's what it is. So there has to be security in place to hold that up. So everything has gone online now, right? Um, it's not It's not a matter of that. And, you know, look, look where we are today. So uh, what I'm seeing is instant payments is going to be the new, you know, online norm, just like it is today. Yeah. And it's a real plain, as Terry said, it's a real pain in the behind when someone writes you a check. Yeah. Uh, particularly if it's a check that's not from a Michigan bank. And then you got to mm -hmm. wait three or four days. And you know that money, because when I do PayPal and do instant transfer, it's in my bank account in two minutes. And and they're just holding on to the money so they can carry the float, right? You know, yep. I don't. Capital. Yep. <laughs> I know what they're doing, you yeah. know. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. it, all right. So, Terry, why don't you. Uh, Take us out of this segment. Yeah. yeah I uh, Listen, Rolla, before before we let you completely off the hook here, okay. tell, tell the listeners, like, why they should call you. What, like, what, what might you be able to help them do or do better? And then how do they reach you? Listen, in a nutshell, what I can, so they can reach me on LinkedIn. Um, I'd say that's the best way. So just, you know, Google my first and last name and I'm on LinkedIn. Spell it for I'd them. Say, yeah, I would say, I, al yeah, I, al I always say I love to share and exchange perspectives, right? In the industry and what's happening, um, they should reach out to me to exchange perspectives. They should reach out to me um, as a reliable partner for direct processing, for regulation. Um, we have been in the business for years. Um, we are in the Fortune 500, uh, one of the Fortune 500 technology companies. So um, we definitely have an open ecosystem and can provide uh, fintechs the support and infrastructure that they need to grow and scale. Okay. Awesome. So you can find Rolla at R O L A F A R A W I on LinkedIn and reach out to her with any of your fintech conversations.